Hi, this is Brother Sean with eLearning Brothers. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you how to use our Adobe Captivate responsive game templates. I have one of them opened up right now in Adobe Captivate 8. And what I'd like to show you how to do with these is how to use them in a, an existing project that you may have, how to change the content, add in your own text, how to update the number of questions you want in the game, as well as how to change the question type and to indicate which answer is going to be the correct answer and how to change the colors and rebrand the game. All right, so first thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use this in an existing project. Once you have the game template open, um, over in the film strip mode, all we're going to do is just copy all the slides. You'll notice how the game is set up is we have an intro screen with the logo and then each question is its own slide. So what we want to do is just copy all of them. You could just select the top one, go all the way down to the very bottom, make sure you get the conclusion and the you lose screen. Hit shift and then click the bottom one and it should select all of them from film strip mode. Then you can just right click on one of them and go copy and it's copying all those slides right now. Once they're copied, you can go into your existing project, right click where you would like the game to be and then just hit paste and that'll paste the game right into your your new project and your game will be ready to go and it might take a little while based on um, you know how big your project is and how much content you may or may not have in the game template and it should just populate right into here if you do need to reposition your course um, in the project, make sure you grab all of the files in the film strip mode and move them together as one independent file. Also note that um, your, uh, your game template, because it is on multiple slides, um, you'll want to make sure that you um, go up to your themes and your table of contents and decide which, um, which of those slides you'd like to show in the table of contents. Most likely you just want to have the intro screen shown in the table of contents and then hide the question slides and even the conclusion and the you lose screen from that table of contents. Um, now that the slides have copied in, you can see that they've all been put into the film strip mode. You'll also notice that the branding of my course has, um, that the game template has inherited that branding, um, which I think is great because now it matches the rest of my course. Let me just change the view here to best fit so I can see it better and then you go into the game and it brings in the same background as my as the, my course the rest of my project so I'm really happy with how that did that if you did for some reason want um, you know the original background files the color and stuff from here you just simply want to go into your master slide view and copy the appropriate master slides here and the graphics from here and then put them in as a new master slide within your your new project so that's how you um, use our game template into or copy it into an existing project and use it in a real course. Um, I'm going to jump back over to the template file um, just for simplicity here and show you how to add the text, add your own content into the game. Um, very easy to do this. You simply just go to the slide you want to add content and just add the content right in by double clicking into the, the appropriate text fields. And just copy and pasting if you're working from a storyboard or just simply type in the text. You'll also notice that as you change the text in, um, um, in the desktop view or the primary view here, as you go to the different tablet and mobile view, that text carries on. Um, as a side note, um, always change and update your content text in the primary view. If you're new to working with Captive A8 and responsive design, if you are to make modifications to your text using like the mobile view here and then you go back to desktop view it'll break the connection with those two fields and then if you make edits in the future you'll have to update the primary view the tablet view and the mobile view separately and independently you might want that feature um, if you don't though just as a side note best practice just change it in primary view and it'll auto populate for those other two um, uh, breakpoints if you go into your question slides, same thing, just double click on question one, copy and paste, or just type in your own text, modify it however you need to. Very simple to do that. If you want to add an image in there, you could add an image just by going up to 
media, an image, import an image in, and put it where you like. Very simple. Answer, same thing. You could change even the button text, the hint button text. Really, you can change any of these objects. You'll notice on each of the question slides, too, if I pop open that timeline, there might be a few layers, layers hidden. Um, for example, here's the hint text. It's just hidden um, by default just for our, our preview here, but when you play the game, it's not hidden. It'll show when you click the hint buttons. Um, we also have the incorrect text, uh, incorrect remediation, or the correct remediation. And then there's also a continue button after you've answered the questions correct, that continue button shows. So make sure you look in the timeline and make sure you're editing all the appropriate text that you need for each of the questions. And if you scroll all the way down, you'll also notice that you have the conclusion and the you lose screen. Same thing, you can just update the text just by double clicking on it and copying and pasting or just typing in your new text. Um, next, I'd like to show you how to update the number of questions. Um, what you don't want to do is you don't want to just delete the slides out of here. Um, best practice is to go up to, um, well actually let me just say, if you, if you delete them from here, um, starting at the bottom and moving up, if, if you only wanted 15 questions, in theory you could delete questions 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. It'll still work proper, um, but what that potentially could do is down the road if you want to make an edit to your course and you need to add two more questions, that's where it's going to be a problem. It's going to be very challenging for you to go and rebuild that. Um, so I recommend just leaving them in and then instead of deleting questions out, you just go up to project and then variables. And the very first variable that we have set up is number of questions. And you can simply change that from, from 10 all the way up. You can go all the way up to 20 if you like. So if you just want maybe five questions, just type in five. If you want 19, type in 19. The great thing is, is the game template is smart enough to adjust the score. Uh, for this particular game, it's supposed to be a million dollars that you're trying to get if you answer all the questions correct. So if you have 10 questions, then each one of the questions is going to be divided, the million is going to be divided by 10. So each question will be worth $100,000. Um, so very simple to do is change it to whatever you like. And that's all you need to do to change the number of questions. Um, actually, once you type in the thing, make sure you click update. And that will officially update it. And then you could just close the variable panel out if you like. Um, next, question type. And selecting which answers are correct. So answer or question number one, if you click on the variable that says question one, answer question type, you'll notice the description has a few different options here. If you leave the value right here blank, it'll be multiple choice answer. That means either A, just one choice will be correct, A, B, C, or D. If you want multiple answers um, to be correct, so you need to select maybe A and B to be correct, you'd want to type in MA for multiple answer. Click update. If you want it to be true or false, which would only show answers A and B, then you'd want to type in TF and click update. And then if you just want it to be multiple choice, hit delete, nothing in there, and click update. Very simple to do that. You can just do that for each of your answers or each of your question types just by selecting the, the variable down below and then typing in the value and clicking update. To indicate which answer is correct, you just simply go to the question number one and it looks like there's four choices here. Question one, answer A, B, C, and D. Should be pretty self-explanatory. And then if you look in the description, you just need to type the, the value of the answer type. So if you want this, want answer A to be correct, you would change that zero to a one and click update. If you want it to be incorrect, just type in zero and click update. You'll notice that by default there should be one correct answer because and then the answer types are always multiple choice by default. So if you do end up changing it, and let's say you want answer A to be the correct one, type in zero, click update. And then let's say answer A is the correct one, click one, click update. And now, like we close this out, 
And the next thing I want to do is just make sure I update my content to really have to really reflect which one's correct. Because right now my text says that this is incorrect, but my code that I just programmed, my variable, says that it will be correct. So I want to make sure I just type in my correct answer text in here and then make sure my uh, my my incorrect text would be in the one down below. And I type in not, right? So obviously you'd have your, your real content in there, so that wouldn't be a problem. All right, next thing I want to show you is uh, just how to change the colors and rebrand this to really match the style and look and feel of what you need to. Um, you notice when I did copy and paste it into my actual project file that the, the template did inherit the background color and texture of my course, which was great if you're, if you're trying to come up with a, a unique brand for your, uh, for your project or for your company or for your course. Um, if you are just in the game template, know that we are leveraging um, Captivate's um, styles that they've built into the software. Um, if you're not familiar with them, they're very similar to um, CSS with um, HTML code. Um, so how it works is if you'd like to change this, this button, this yellow button, you could come out here and let's say I want to make it a solid color and I want to fill it into, you know, make it a, let's just go with a bright red. And then you can change it all the different states, the down state, the rollover also. You can change the text color if you like, add a stroke to it, just by modifying in the properties panel um, the look and feel of things right here. Change the font to, let's say, white. Um, we could you know, change it to a Times New Roman if you want. So you modify exactly how you like. You'll notice that the style name now has a plus sign on it. That means that that style has been modified. This Millionaire Answer BTN, that's the name of the style. It's been modified, and that's why that plus sign's there. All we need to do is just drop down this little drop down, and we have a couple choices here. We can create a new style, which would only be applicable for that one little button there. Or I could save changes to the existing style. All the buttons in this entire project are using this exact same style. So if I click Save Changes to the Existing Style, it is going to modify every button now in this project and it will um, kind of magically rebrand itself now. Since I have a lot of slides and a lot of questions, it might take a little while for Captivate to spin through and update them all. But know that that's what it's doing right now. You'll notice that it just updated everything on this slide. And if I go to question number two, the same thing. Every slide now is updated just by modifying that one file. You could do that with every object in this um, project. Um, your question text, same concept. If you want the, the background color to be a different color, you just change the fill color. Let's do something really uh, loud here so we can see it change. You can change the stroke color. So you can see you have a, a lot of control over these styles. All I need to do is just go back up again, save to the existing style, and it'll save it for every project file or every, every slide in this project. Anyways, this is um, our Captivate responsive game templates. Um, this is how you use them, how you update them, how you edit them. And um, we hope this has been uh, helpful for you. And we want to wish you a happy e-learning and a happy development.